Yo, Guido coming at you. Coffee talk. Oh my gosh, hold on. Come over here, Mike. Is that better? Okay. Woo. I was doing some VR stuff, so I had to slide the mic out of the way. We're in the coffee shop, and it's apropos because I have some new coffee. Mmm. Mmm. Very nice. So I have a, a thank you and an apology. First, the apology to the person who sent me the coffee because it's been languishing down in my P.O. box. I'd like to say I think I've checked it in the decent in the decent in the recent past, but uh, I don't know because this is a Christmas card. <laughs> so maybe a combination of sent late and I didn't check, or maybe it was sent on time and my present has been languishing down in the down in the post office. So apologies to the person who sent it, sent me a nice card. It says peace on earth. We've got during the wonderful time during this wonderful time of year, may you be surrounded by family and friends. And I was. So thank you very much for the Christmas greetings. It says happy Tankmas and have a happy Pew Pew year, which <laughs> I thought was perfect. Excellent. And it was very nicely addressed to Guido and family. So yes, my wife will enjoy this coffee. So what I got was some more Gold County Roasters. So we've got two nice big bags of coffee to grind through. So I, I got through the other two bags. So we've got a auto drip grind, very good. That's the grind. We have Guatemala Hue Hue Tenango. Tenango, Hue Hue Tenango. Ooh, look at that, what's it doing? Camera's going crazy. And that's what I have in the cup. So I started with that. That sounded interesting. It's very nice. It's nice and smooth, actually. And it's showing not too dark. So it's probably one third of the way up. And I would say that's true. That's that's nice. And I think my wife's going to really like this one. But this is the one I'm looking forward to the most for me. It's a much darker roast. Columbia La Cabana French. And I think, I think the Columbia La Cabana was sent to me last time too. And as I recall, this was the, the nice, dark, very nice, just full-bodied coffee. So thank you for sending that, and apologies for not getting to it, for not checking my my uh, P.O. box for quite a long time. Probably thought I either ignored it or it got lost or whatever. It could have been on a train track in L.A. for all we know. I don't know. Hmm. No, entirely my fault. Thank you. Merry Christmas. That was fantastic. Very generous of you, and it will not be wasted. I can promise you that. So I've already, I'm already tucking into it. Very cool. All right. So we have that. That's very good. We're in the coffee shop for that. I think that's apropos. We have some things uh, happening, my friends. We have some things happening. Breaking loose, as they say. Thing number one. Yo tanks are on the way. And my understanding is tomorrow, the 26th, there is an article up here on the webpage. Remember that it starts at tier six with the Pollack, which means the tier one, or sorry, the T1 tier five American heavy, which is here in the, maybe that's not gonna work. Why does it not wanna work? I don't know, there we go, all right. So the T1 heavy, experience requirements, somewhere between 30 and 50. If you wanted to be absolutely sure, you'd have above 50, maybe no more than 60,000 experience on the T1. I'm at 26, which I think is at the bottom of the possibilities. It's a new line. I would suspect it's above 30. That's just a guess. But if you look at the list, there's you can Google foo it, but I found a list that showed anywhere between, on the low end, 26 or so for a tier 6 off of a tier 5 for a heavy, all the way up to 50s and a little bit beyond. So... Best guess between 30 and 50. You'd have 60 if you wanted to be absolutely sure that you're going to get it. Of course, you only have day, today to do it. So I'm going to have to grind probably a little bit to get that thing. All right. So back over here, the Pollack. This does not, I believe, have the new mechanic on it. I think the new mechanic starts at Tier 7, as I recall. And the Tier 7 then is going to be the M2Y. That's the new reserve track mechanic. So it's the first vehicle, and I was correct then. So the Tier 7 is the first one. I'm not going to go through these. We'll do a review and stuff later on. And then we got the M3Y, which is the Tier 8. Remember, the M4Y is the premium, the MIVI. This is the ME, ME3Y, I don't know. The M6Y, which is going to be a little confusing if you have Lysdexia and you're looking at the tank rolls over there, because the M4Y is going to look very similar to that in terms of on the... Uh, on the list of players. 
doesn't actually look like one in any way, shape, or form, and it's the tier 9, and then the M5Y. Wait a minute, M, M6Y is the tier 9. M5, oh my gosh. <laughs> War gaming, come on. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the M6 is a tier 9, the M5 is the tier 10. So that is the Jar Jar Binks looking thing, or maybe more so the uh, Battle Droids looking kind of tank right there. So those are on the way. Expect that tomorrow. That's my understanding. That is my understanding. One more thing. Hold on a second. Actually, before we get that, I just wanted to make a shout out to Gold County Roasters. That's where the coffee is from. It is Gold County Roasters and it is an independent artisan coffee roasting company and coffee house in the charming and historic Calaveras County town of Murphy's. In the heart of California's historic gold country. And I'm going to tell you, this is pretty good coffee, my friends. I, I, do, I do enjoy this and I am enjoying this mild roast more so than I thought I might. Now, to be fair, I do put creamer in it, which is probably going to drive the uh, coffee avocados a little bit crazy. I did have a few sips of it, plain Jane, nothing in it, also good and smooth, but I just really enjoy a little bit of creamer chucked in there. Uh, and I will tell you that this nice little uh, less dark version, which one was it that I had? The Here it is, the Guatemala Hue Hue Tenango. Like I said, it's about a third of the way up in darkness. And a little bit of creamer in there, just a very smooth, very nice coffee. But there you go. There's their website. Just look for goldcountyroasters.com. Shout out to those guys. All right, now let's move on because there's probably also, there is probably also starting on, I think, the 28th, a marathon. Let's look at those tank or that tank now. Apparently, and this is the rumor, it's going to be the WZ114 for the marathon. It's supposed to start on Friday the 28th. I have zero information on this. This is only taken off the blogs. I am not under NDA with Wargaming because they've told me Bubkiss. In fact, we didn't even know Yo Tanks were coming out. We didn't even know that Yo Tanks were coming out tomorrow. That's a rumor as well, so take it with a grain of salt. That being said, here is the 114, which is a Tier 9 Premium. Here it is, folks. The next Tier 9 Premium, if it comes out. And I'm going to caveat this and throw a little grain of, grain of uh, salt in on this because a slight sneak peek from the Chinese server. I, I don't know how much we can say that what is happening on the Chinese server is going to happen here. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's the same but different. <laughs> sometimes it's the same but different. A WZ114 is going to sound a little bit familiar, my friends. A little bit familiar because... Well, there are already tier nine Chinese, and I don't. Did I do this video? I don't remember if I actually ended up doing this video or not. It might have got lost in the shuffle. I was planning on doing a comparison amongst all the tier ten Chinese heavy tanks. There are four of them, but basically two of them are the same, and all four of them are essentially the same anyway. Very strange situation in the Chinese branch, if I'm honest. Not very many lines, but a lot of very similar and duplicate tanks. Very odd. Well, let's jump over here to tanks.gg and I've got a comparison up for you. This is compared with the WZ111. I'm sorry, this is compared with the Sturv K. We'll do the 111 in just a second. The Sturv K, why? Because the Sturv K is the other premium tier 9. This thing fixes a few of the problems with the Sturv K and looks to be a little bit better. One thing I noticed on this tanks.gg is it does not compare DPG unless I miss I cannot find it it's got potential damage but I don't see any DPG numbers on there maybe you guys can fix me down in the comments very strange anyway let's take a look at it it's dropping 530 whereas the Sturv K has 390 so more appropriate tier 9 heavy alpha pens pretty good at 266 oh by the way and this is cool I don't know if you knew you could do this learning a little bit more about tanks.gg we'll just change the ammo and look it goes to 311 there's one of the big weaknesses of the Sturv K its premium shot is not very good 311 is usable at tier 9 and you can start start penetrating tier 10s and things it's not overpowered in terms of just going through anything it is pretty good at 311 so I thought that was very interesting let's switch it back it changes a few other things right there like shell velocity 
Reload time is atrocious, and when we compare it to the WZ111-4, that thing reloads about six seconds faster than this, and they have the same alpha. So what I'm getting from this is this thing's going to have a pretty bad DPG. Pretty bad, not DPG, DPM. How many times have I said DPG? I meant DPM. Pretty bad in terms of comparison, right? So very much longer reload at almost 20 seconds. Aim time's not great at 3.72, but the dispersion's pretty nice at 3.2. Uh, let's see, we've got some worse dispersion factors. All right, soft stats in here. Damage versus modules, it's a 130 caliber, which is going to have to do with some of the overmatching mechanics. Shell velocity's pretty good at 1,271. We'll take a look at it with the heat. You're going to get a much slower round at 720. Woof, that's, a, that's not great. But heat does tend to be slower. Shell cost, all that good stuff. 33 on the top speed, so it's not extremely fast. It's much slower than the WZ-111 1-4. That's one of the things that it has uh, against it in terms of that comparison. Come down here. Effective top speed is 33, so apparently it can get to there. Traverse is not amazing. Gun elevation, gun depression, minus 10, folks. Minus 10. That's way better than the WZ-1-4 right there. Armor is okay at 140 and 300. It's much better than the Sturve. So now we have a, a relatively well-armored heavy tank that's a premium tier 9. So what's the upshot of all this? In my opinion, it's looking like a stronger tank than the Sturve K. It, it really is. Other than this reload is very, very interesting. That is a long time, my friends. So let's change over to the WZ111-4 one of its stable mates in terms of tier 9 heavies on the Chinese line. So we've got the WZ-111 versus model 1-4 versus the, the WZ-114. All right. Five, same damage, same penetration. Let's see what happens if we change over to the heat round. It's the same heat round. Oh, that's not true. It's much higher than that one. That's only 244. So the WZ-111-4 has a much worse heat round right there. Or gold round, it may be AP, I don't know. But look at this reload time. So we're at 13 seconds for a 530 alpha with the premium. And the tech tree model is sitting at 13.42. I'm curious about that. I need, to, I need to dig into the DPM because that's very strange. The dispersion's good. The gun's actually pretty good for a Chinese gun on the WZ-111-1-4. It's actually not bad at all. Worst dispersion factors for the premium. Shell velocity is much better for the standard round. Of course, you got, let's look at the shell velocity and see if we can dope out. Nope, they're both bad, so it looks like it's a heat round as well. So it's got a nice heat round, actually, at 311. Coming over here, power, same speeds, terrain resistances are worse. And look at that, it's five degrees for the WZ-111-1-4 and 10. <laughs> Man, you, Wargaming is loath to release new tanks with much worse than about minus eight based on the way they have built their game, the way the meta is, the way everything's hold down now, even when it makes not a lot of sense in terms of the way the turret is built. <laughs> it's a 130 millimeter gun. I didn't really look closely at the turret. Is there really that much room on the roof of it to go minus 10? I don't know. Does it matter? No, because we're now playing a balancing games right here. <laughs> Look at this armor, man. What? <laughs> just as fast, just as fast, just as accurate, much better armor. 300 on the turret. 300 on the turret. The hole's the same, but 300. Up from 230 from the WZ111-4. Wow. This one's going to be interesting. That reload time is a bit of a killer. So it looks like the major balancing factor on this thing is the reload time for the same alpha as its stablemate, the WZ-111-1-4. What other Chinese tanks are in here? Probably none. There is the FL. I think that's the only other tier 9 there is out there. The only thing we can really line it up with. Very, very interesting, my friends. Very interesting. So there you go. Thank you for the coffee. It will absolutely get used. I'm enjoying this right now on my Coffee Talk Supplemental on a rainy Tuesday afternoon. 
Mm. It's very nice. Thank you. Apologies for being late on digging it out of my post office box. Yo tanks apparently are being chucked at us tomorrow with a update. We're going to have a patch tomorrow. That's what's being reported anyway. No official information from Wargaming. I don't even know. I looked at it briefly. Did it mention in here a date? I couldn't see one. And it didn't seem like... Like, wouldn't you put the date up here somewhere? Several months ago. Yep, yep. With this... Yep. There's no date. They're coming. I don't know. Today. No, that's when it's released. Uh, let's see. An outstanding unreleased project. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Is there a date buried in that? I have no idea. So Yo Tanks are coming probably tomorrow. And then we've got the old WZ-114, a leak from the Chinese server, also being reported on Two Line Push and some of the other blogs and Watt Express, yada yada. Supposedly on the 28th, there's going to be a marathon for that bad boy. Remember, the O-Tanks will be the T1. Again, I don't know what Wargaming is doing in terms of CCs and information flow. It, we have zero. We know as much as you do. I guess they're just leaking it to blogs or whatever. There you have it. There are some videos out there doing a little more in-depth analysis. I know Cody Menz has one. If you want to check out his channel, he digs into the 114 a little bit, I believe. And I will get you reviews on these things as soon as possible. That is all I've got for today. Thanks for coming in. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Mm. So good. Enjoy your afternoon. We'll see you.